Okay. Uh, so uh, today's lecture will be devoted to uh, some data types uh, in linguistics. And actually not only uh, linguistics. Uh, actually, um, I begin with uh, some rather universal uh, story. Uh, what uh, what is um, actually called uh, a data analysis uh, is um, probably the following uh, the following the following uh, idea uh, that uh, we have some um, some natural phenomenon some real world uh, and and uh, we have this real world that we want to study. In linguistics, uh, it can be some, um, some people that uh, speak different languages and uh, some phenomena in their languages uh, that actually exist in the real world. And uh, we want to study uh, to study this uh, this real world phenomena. And uh, to do so, we perform some kind of experiments or collect uh, some data in some way, and. Um, uh, then uh, we can say that this uh, this real world uh, generated uh, some data. So we have data here, and uh, for example, this data can be presented, and it will be presented uh, in uh, in some tables that are called uh, data frames, uh, at least in R. So this is some table with some numerical and non-numerical values. And uh, then uh, we uh, look at this data and uh, we want to say something about uh, the real world. We want to uncover uh, some mechanisms. Uh, we want to uncover uh, some patterns that uh, take place in this real world. So actually, uh, when we say uh, data science, data analysis, and so on, um, this term can be a little bit misleading because uh, what we are really interested in uh, is not data. We are really interested in uh, some real world uh, phenomena and we use data as a kind of fingerprint of this real world phenomena. And we analyze data to make conclusions about this real world. Uh, and uh, to do so, uh, we uh, have to use uh, some uh, a bit of uh, mathematical modeling because uh, actually uh, the only tool that uh, are is available to make uh, some rigorous claims uh, about uh, the real world uh, uh, it is some mathematical models uh, and uh, so uh, we actually replace our real world. Uh, which is uh, very complicated and uh, uh, there are a lot of uh, some relations between uh, some parts of this uh, real world systems and actually nobody can understand the whole things that happens in the real world uh, and we replace uh, in this complicated real world with a much simpler uh, and much uh, much accessible uh, mathematical models. So uh, instead of considering real world, we replace it uh, with some model. Uh, so uh, we do, okay, uh, this is data collection. Uh, and uh, we do uh, something like this. We have now some model which is much simpler than the real world. Uh, and we assume that our data that uh, we have, uh, that these data are collected using this model. This model uh, usually uh, is, um, uh, uses uh, some probability theory uh, under the hood. Uh, so we believe that our data that we obtained 
uh, that it is uh, obtained uh, as a result of some kind of random experiments like uh, coin tossings. Uh, something like that, but uh, more complicated. And after, uh, after we change uh, this point of view, after we think that uh, instead of uh, a very complicated real world, we consider only simplified mathematical models, uh, we can use uh, probability theory uh, to study how our data can be obtained from uh, the model. And uh, on the other hand, uh, we have mathematical statistics uh, to, to do inverse uh, inference. So if you have data and you want to say something about, uh, about your model. Uh, so we are basically interested in this arrow, uh, but to, to um, understand something about this arrow, uh, we have to know uh, just a little bit about probability theory. So um, I think that uh, at the next lecture, uh, we will discuss uh, some elements uh, of probability theory that uh, we need to uh, continue. But uh, today uh, we will mostly discuss uh, this part of our, um, uh, our picture. Uh, we will mostly discuss uh, types of uh, the data and uh, some simple analytical methods uh, that allows us to deal with them. So uh, let us begin with uh, types of data, types of variables. Uh, so, uh, basically, uh, when we deal with uh, some empirical, empirical data, uh, you store this data in a table, and uh, this table has a rather well-defined structure. So, for example, let us assume that we have some kind of uh, linguistic experiment. It is easier to think about social linguistic experiment for me, um, because um, in this case, uh, we have, for example, several informants, uh, several people uh, who we ask um, some questions about the uh, use of language. And we know uh, something about these people and we have uh, their answers. And we can store uh, this kind of data in, uh, in a table. And this table can look uh, something like this. Uh, for example, we have informant ib and we have um, it, it can be name or it can be just uh, some uh, abstract uh, abstract uh, identifier just to uh, make sure that we understand uh, who uh, is it in uh, our data set and it is possible that we have some information about this uh, person. For example, we are interested in uh, the relation between a uh, person's age and uh, some um, properties of uh, the language that uh, this person use. Uh, for example, uh, it is possible that we have something like uh, here we have age and we have some uh, another information, for example, uh, city of birth. Uh, for example, Moscow. And um, probably uh, we uh, conducted some study when we asked uh, this person to uh, describe uh, some object. And we know that uh, this person can use uh, one word or another word to describe this object. Uh, and we just uh, store information about which word was chosen. Uh, for example, I don't know. Uh, we ask this person how they call the place uh, where garbage goes. And uh, there are two possible ways to call this, uh, this place. Uh, it can be uh, either Musorka uh, or Pomoika. Uh, and we are, uh, we, you know, put here uh, the word that uh, was chosen. Uh, so garbage place. 
uh, is called. So, for example, uh, this person calls it uh, Musorka. And we have uh, another person. Uh, for example, some person from St. Petersburg and uh, this person uses a uh, word Omoika. And a third person uh, of age 45, again from Moscow. And uh, he also uses Pomoika. And so on. So uh, we probably have a large table, probably thousands of rows, or sometimes it is hundreds, sometimes it is thousands. It is also possible that it is millions of of rows in this table. So this is a typical uh, a typical data frame, typical table uh, that contains the data. And uh, there is a special, um, actually uh, rows and columns of this table uh, uh, have special names. Uh, rows are called observations. Uh, and columns are called variables. Uh, so we believe that row uh, contain, uh, contains information about some, some object. Uh, the nature of this object can be arbitrary. It can be um, informant or it can be a sentence in a language uh, or it can be a city or something, something else. Some unit uh, unit of uh, unit of observation, some basic object that you are interested in, uh, and uh, columns uh, contain uh, properties of this uh, of these objects, properties of your observations. Uh, so uh, they are called variables. And uh, we now discuss uh, different kinds of uh, variables. So uh, what kind what kind of you know, variables uh, exist? Uh, actually, there are uh, several ways to classify them, uh, and uh, let us start with uh, the simplest, in some sense. Uh, for example, uh, we can uh, have a variable like age, uh, and uh, this variable is numeric. And uh, this is uh, our first Data time, uh, data type, data type, numeric variables. Uh, sometimes uh, people subdivide these numeric variables into several other uh, subtypes. I want to, um, uh, I want to stress uh, that uh, there are. It, it is possible to consider different types of numeric variables. For example, uh, there is type like age, and we understand that age uh, is uh, a real number. So. Uh, it is possible, for example, uh, to uh, have a age uh, not exactly 35, but 35.4, uh, for example. Yeah, so uh, sometimes uh, we have only integer values in a column like age, but we understand that if we just uh, had more precise information, uh, this, uh, this variable can be presented by any real number. Uh, so uh, numeric variables usually subdivided uh, into uh, real uh, and uh, another possible uh, numeric variable is integer. Uh, for example, can you uh, can you show me an example of some numeric variable that can be only integer? Age. Uh, age can be age can be uh, age can be real. For example, I can store uh, information that, uh, for example, somebody's age not thirty five but thirty five dot four. Number of people. Uh, uh, yes. Uh, for example, number. Of, for example, I'm interested in the relation between well, for example, number of relatives or number of childs. Uh, 
uh, or something like this. Uh, for example, number of children, uh, number of children of a participant. Uh, you have only integer integer number of children. Uh, sometimes uh, it is uh, important to distinguish between uh, some integer uh, numeric uh, variables. Uh, usually integer numeric variables are, are obtained by counting of some objects. Uh, for example, you can count number of words in a sentence. And this is also will be integer uh, variable that represents uh, the result of some counting. Uh, but anyway, uh, numeric variables are, in a sense, simple uh, because you can do a lot of mathematical operations with them. Uh, but, yes, I have a question. But yes. what other is uh, what other real numeric? Uh, uh, real? Oh, well, uh, anything. If you're if you're thinking about people, you can ask, uh, for example, about uh, I don't know. Uh, length of their uh, of their hand or of their finger. Uh, there is some research that relates uh, length of uh, fingers uh, with some um, behavioral properties of people. For example, it is known that uh, people with some, um, I don't remember, the larger the ratio between uh, this finger and this finger, uh, the, uh, the higher probability to make more risky investments. Uh, it is, uh, there was some research of this kind uh, in, in finance. Uh, For example, and, population, it will be... Oh, that's a, good, that's a good question. Basically, we treat population usually as uh, a real variable. Uh, because, of course, we understand that population uh, is just a number of number of um, persons and uh, it, is, it should be integer, but from practical point of view, we usually treat it just uh, as real. For example, we, if we think about population of a country, we understand that nobody, nobody can measure uh, actual population of a country with uh, uh, the precision uh, up to just one person. This is, uh, we measure them, I don't know, in thousands or in tenth or tenth of thousands, and so. We usually just think about it as a real variable. Um, okay, other questions? If I buy uh, three roses uh, for my mother to give them to her, it is what is it? What is that? Uh, three roses. Pro pro Probably it can be uh, probably it can be integer if we are speaking about uh, you, uh, but if we are if we are speaking about how many roses I should buy if 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 I if I am a shop that uh, sell these roses uh, probably uh, I will treat it uh, as uh, uh, as real. Um, anyway, it is not uh, actually it is not uh, very important uh, for us because. Um, our uh, software that we will use uh, do not distinguish uh, between integer and real uh, variables. Uh, it, uh, it have a numeric uh, type and uh, it can store both uh, integer and real uh, values. This is in contrast with Python uh, that distinguishes between uh, integer and um, float uh, variables. Now, am I correct that everybody uh, have some experience with Python? Some yes. Uh, some yes. Uh, I uh, I need just a little bit uh, just to uh, just understand that, for example, everybody understands uh, what variable in computer programming uh, is. So uh, everybody have uh, everybody have some experience. That's good. Okay. Uh, then uh, uh, another uh, another uh, types of variables that we will consider. Uh, is categorical variable. Uh, and actually we have some categorical variables uh, in this table. Uh, actually this city of birth and uh, this, uh, this variable that denotes this, how this person calls this garbage place. Uh, uh, these, uh, these variables are categorical. 
uh, so categorical variables uh, that take uh, one of usually finite possible values. Uh, so examples, city of birth, uh, or uh, for example, if we are considering some uh, linguistic data point, for example, you're considering uh, a word, and this word, if you, if your if your observation is a word, uh, then this word can uh, can have uh, some categorical uh, categorical variables uh, for example part of speech uh, so we uh, we before we get any data we understand uh, what kind of uh, what kind of um, uh, what kind of values uh, can this uh, variable take uh, usually uh, and uh, actually these categorical variables also can be subdivided into two two parts uh, two subtypes uh, we have unordered categorical variables and uh, we have ordered categorical variables uh, so um, uh, it is easier to explain what is uh, ordered categorical variable. Uh, sometimes uh, we have some natural order on uh, the values uh, that a categorical variable can take. Um, for example, uh, we have education level. And uh, probably we have uh, the following uh, the following levels of this uh, variable. Uh, for example, uh, just general school, um, high school, Um, okay, maybe uh, uh, maybe it is easier just to uh, bachelor, master, uh, PhD. Uh, for example, uh, we have uh, we have a row. Um, sorry, we have a column education uh, with uh, these four possible values, and we understand that uh, there is uh, a natural uh, a natural uh, relation between uh, between this uh, between these levels, we understand that uh, PhD is in a sense larger than master. Master is in a sense larger than bachelor, and bachelor is uh, larger than um, just general education. Uh, so uh, in this case, uh, we are discussing ordered categorical variable. And everything rest uh, is unordered. Uh, for example, city of birth uh, is usually uh, considered as uh, uh, unordered variable because we cannot say that some city is, in a sense, larger than another city. Of course, uh, if we are interested in some particular feature of uh, the city, for example, uh, the number of uh, the number of citizens. Uh, then uh, we can add uh, some ordering to uh, this uh, categorical variable. But uh, a priori, uh, city of birth is uh, not ordered, uh, is unordered uh, categorical variable. Uh, so uh, we must say that ordered categorical variables are somewhere in between. Uh, we have absolutely unordered things here. And we have numeric values here, and uh, order categorical variables uh, is somewhere in between. And sometimes people encode this order categorical variables with numbers. Sometimes it is okay, sometimes it is not. Uh, we will discuss it later. But anyway, uh, this is basically uh, um, this data types so that uh, we have. Um, Uh, 
let us try to uh, to find some other kind of uh, variables of this of these types. For example, uh, can you give me an example of some uh, unordered categorical variable in linguistic study? Something that we did not discuss so far in any linguistic study you can imagine. Some categorical variable. The words of a consonant initial or verbal initial. Uh, uh, the number of consonants. Uh, the the uh, consonant initial words or a uh, vowel. Ah, okay. Initial. Okay. Uh, so, uh, for example, we have a particular word, and we are interested in um, in the first uh, in the first letter. Is it uh, in the is it a consonant or a vowel? Yeah. Great. Great. Uh, consonant or vowel. Uh, of a particular letter mm -hmm. in the world. Yeah, uh, we probably have some data that is obtained from some corpus, so from some collection of texts, uh, and we are studying. Uh, we are studying the words, uh, and we can be interested in in some uh, data that is related to just letters uh, that uh, in, are contained in this uh, in this uh, word. Okay. Uh, any example of ordered of ordered um, variable? Uh, perhaps uh, phonemes, in a way, could be uh, ordered variables because we have. Uh, uh, close vowels, uh, uh, mid vowels, uh, open vowels, or mm -hmm. in uh, another terminology, uh, high, mid, and low vowels. So we have an order. And mm -hmm. um, we can also say like front, central, and back vowels. So it could be uh, an ordered uh, variable. Mm -hmm. High, mid, uh, and low vowels. Yeah. Right. Okay. Yes. Good. Uh, and why? I, can... I don't know much. I, I don't know much about vowels, but I, uh, I, I believe you that uh, they can be classified into these uh, three categories, and uh, this is indeed uh, some natural order on this, on this category. Yeah. Good. Other. But can we, uh, can we say that it's an order, ordered? Uh, because well, interesting. Uh, those high, mid, or low vowels, they do not uh, intersect. It's not like bachelor and master. If you are a master, you already ha uh, kind of have bachelor. It, uh, no, uh, it is not, uh, it not, is not needed. Uh, yeah, yeah, I, I, I understand your question. No, it is not needed that, uh, that these properties be uh, like a subset, like a larger property is a superset of the lower property. No, we don't need it. We just need uh, some, uh, any, uh, any natural, natural ordering. Okay. Um, good. And thank you for your questions. So, uh, okay. Uh, any kind of numeric, uh, numeric variables in linguistic research? And examples. The number of uh, syllables of a word. See. Uh, number uh, number of. Syllables. Uh, number of syllables. Mm -hmm. Syllables. Yeah. Good. Uh, syllables. Yes. Uh, this is uh, this is integer integer numeric variable yes and it is uh, it is also uh, quite reasonable uh, reasonable variable because sometimes we are interested in the length of the word uh, and uh, this length can be uh, can be measured uh, in number of syllables and 
um, sometimes it is uh, really good uh, a good way to to measure the length of words. And of course, it is possible that we can imagine some research where we interested in the relation between the length of a word or and some other properties of this word or in other words that uh, are related to this one or something like this. Yeah, good. Um, sometimes uh, we have data that uh, on, at the first place, um, we have data that does not uh, fit into uh, this scheme. Uh, for example, it is possible that we have dates um, uh, for example, something like uh, September 1st uh, to uh, 2021. Uh, and uh, these dates uh, can be converted usually. Um, in most of cases, if you are interested in some periods of time, you can convert your date information into uh, some just a numeric uh, numeric values uh, like how many days uh, we have from this date to this date, and now uh, it is it is just a numeric numeric variable. Uh, for example, you can convert uh, something like it is possible that you have uh, a column with date of birth, and what you are in really interested in uh, is age of a particular person. So you can just uh, do some simple, uh, do some simple uh, operations with uh, your information, and uh, transform uh, this variable into from uh, from date format to just a numeric format, and then apply methods uh, that uh, can be applied to numeric variables. Uh, okay, uh, so this uh, this is our. Uh, variables. Yes, uh, I also have to uh, add a couple of words about R. Uh, actually, R I have, uh, of course, R, uh, just like any uh, programming language, uh, has uh, uh, some data type that corresponds to numeric variables. As I already said, uh, from, pro from R points of view, it does not distinguish uh, between real and integer. Uh, and uh, it also has a built-in uh, categorical uh, categorical data type. Uh, it is called in our terminology. It is called factor factor variables. So categorical variables are called factors. Um, in other languages, they can be called uh, in other way, uh, but uh, in R, uh, it is factors, and actually factors can be uh, can be ordered and unordered, just like in the scheme that we uh, discussed previously. By default, it is unordered, uh, uh, this is by default. So if you have ordered a uh, factor and you want uh, R to store this information about the order, you have to specify uh, explicitly how uh, how this variable is ordered. Uh, and also R has a dedicated data type uh, for these tables. Uh, so we have data type, uh, which is data frame. Uh, this is tables that we work in R. Uh, and uh, I leave uh, to the practical lessons uh, all the stuff how to work with yeah, data frames. Uh, we will discuss it uh, at your practical lesson. And uh, now I want to discuss a little bit uh, some uh, ways to uh, summarize uh, data and uh, some very basic, uh, very basic visualization uh, techniques. Uh, so, 
we begin with I think uh, I will begin with um, so-called descriptive statistics. Uh, descriptive statistics uh, is a tool uh, to summarize data. So uh, basically you have some very, very, very long table with a lot of rows, for example, thousands of rows. And uh, if you want to just have a, a, a very, a very quick glance at uh, this, at your data, uh, you uh, probably want to look at some descriptive statistics. Uh, the word statistic here means just uh, any value that can be obtained from the data. Uh, and um, uh, there are different descriptive statistics uh, that are related to different kinds of data. And uh, let us uh, begin with numeric data. And uh, we have here, for example, if I have some just a series, uh, a series of uh, numeric uh, values. So let us uh, think about one column uh, in the table, like a column age. And uh, if I'm interested uh, in, in a sense, typical value in uh, this column, uh, then uh, I can do it in different ways. Uh, for example, I can just look at the average value. So if uh, we consider numeric data, uh, for example, we have some values like age. Um, this is age variable. And uh, I can be interested in average uh, or mean. Mean is uh, the same as average, it is a uh, synonym. Uh, so average is just an arithmetic average. Uh, so uh, this is just uh, the following, I have to sum up all the values that I have and divide it by the number of these values. One, two, three, four, five, six. Uh, so if we calculate uh, this value, uh, then we will get average uh, age of people in our, in our sample. I will try to, to use a calculator to find it. Uh, so it is uh, 38.16. Uh, so this is just an uh, arithmetic, uh, arithmetic average. Uh, let me introduce some notation. I can, um, I can denote uh, these values uh, as variables like x1, x2, x3, and so on, xn. And uh, let me denote the whole collection of these numbers uh, just by one uh, letter x. So x is just uh, this, this collection. And then average uh, is denoted, usually denoted by uh, this bar over uh, the name of the variable that denotes uh, the whole collection. Uh, so x bar uh, equals to x1 plus x2 uh, plus and so on plus xn over n. So uh, this is uh, this is just a, a notation for average.
uh, okay. Uh, basically, average is, is, is very popular and uh, we will use uh, it uh, in uh, a lot of cases, but uh, sometimes uh, average is just not uh, the thing that you need. Uh, sometimes you are not so interested in average. Well, the, uh, the standard example uh, is uh, salary. Uh, for example, uh, sometimes we can uh, read in the press uh, something like, uh, according to uh, the reports, uh, average salary of um, uh, people who work in universities uh, is, uh, and then uh, there is some large number. Um, So classical example is salary. Um, sometimes uh, you are not interested in every salary because it is possible that uh, you have, uh, for example, uh, you have a data set uh, that looks like the following. Uh, Assume that uh, these numbers are salaries uh, of five different people um, who work in some organization. And uh, if I find average of these uh, five numbers, uh, I will get, um, okay, let me, let me calculate it. I will get, so here average uh, is uh, 230, uh, which is rather, rather large. Uh, but if I ask, for example, if I'm interested in, is it good to work in this organization? And if I look at uh, this average salary, uh, this can be a little bit misleading. Um, because if I ask what, in a sense, how much, uh, in a sense, average person in this, uh, in this uh, organization, how, how, uh, how, how much, uh, what is, uh, what is uh, the salary of this person, uh, I will not get uh, this, uh, this value because most of people uh, here uh, have a much smaller average than, uh, I, uh, than I have here. So uh, in this case, uh, this average salary, probably it is just not what you're, not you're interested in. If you're interested in how uh, just like ordinary person uh, uh, feels uh, like in this organization, how much does he or she earns, uh, then uh, you probably uh, better to use a, another, uh, another value, which is called median. And uh, median is uh, the following. Uh, you, can, uh, you can sort uh, these numbers so we have 30, 35, 40, 45, 1000. And uh, then you, you pick uh, a number in the middle. This is median. So median of uh, these values uh, is 40. Uh, you see that uh, if I increase uh, this value, uh, what happens with average? If I make uh, this value, if I replace uh, this value from one 
thousand to two thousands. What happens with average? It increases also. Yes, it it it, it increases, and actually, if I have if I have five uh, observations, if I increase this by uh, 1,000, then my average uh, will be increased by 200, which is quite large. But uh, in case of median, if I increase this value, uh, how does it affect median? It doesn't. Yes, uh, we will have exactly the same median as previously. Uh, so uh, this is uh, a nice um, property of median. It uh, it does not change when you change these extreme values. Uh, if I make uh, this uh, maximum even larger, or if I make this minimum even smaller, uh, it uh, the median doesn't change. Uh, this property is called robustness, and sometimes uh, it is very useful to have some robust metrics, some robust statistics of of your data. Because sometimes um, we can have uh, some data that uh, is not very reliable, that has so-called outliers, some values that um, are very far from the other values. And uh, this median does not change uh, much uh, in the presence of these outliers. Sometimes it is important. And sometimes this median is just the thing that you're interested in. So uh, this, uh, these are two ways of how to find, in a sense, average or typical value in a set of uh, numeric, uh, in numeric values. Actually, uh, there is a natural question about median. Do you have any questions about median? Probably you have at least one. About even uh, even quantity of numbers, yes. Yes, yes. Uh, if you have if you have even constitutes, uh, so if you have, for example, something like this, uh, then um, formally speaking, median is any value between twenty and thirty, uh, formally. But um, people usually uh, assume that uh, in this case, median is just uh, uh, one half of some of these values. So in this case, median is uh, 50. Uh, this is median. In case of even values. 25. Oops. Yeah, 25, sure. Even number of values. Okay. Uh, so uh, actually it is a, a good idea if you have some numeric value, for example, if you have a study and in this study you have uh, several participants, uh, several informants, and it is a, if you describe your data, it is a good idea to report some uh, kind of uh, descriptive statistics like this. Because uh, it is um, when people read your study and uh, they have to understand what kind of people did you, uh, did you ask to respond to some questionnaire, for example. Um, is it youth or is it elderly people or old people and so on. Uh, so it is natural to provide this descriptive statistics uh, in your data. Uh, and in case of numeric data, uh, this, uh, these things uh, can be calculated uh, rather easily. Uh, but if your variable is categorical, uh, it can be a bit more complicated because you cannot find average of uh, some categorical values because you cannot do arithmetic with uh, your categorical values. Uh, but uh, some uh, descriptive statistics can also be reported. Uh, for example, uh, some rough, uh, rough counterpart, rough analog uh, of median or uh, average in case of categorical is called mode. Uh, so mode is just 
uh, the value uh, that is most frequent. Uh, for example, if I have city of birth and uh, I have values like Moscow, uh, St. Petersburg, St. Petersburg, Ekaterinburg, uh, and London, uh, then median equals to St. Petersburg. Uh, of course, it is uh, possible that you have uh, several most frequent values. Well, in this case, any of these values can be called uh, can, can be called mode, and uh, usually are. Uh, for example, if you ask uh, it to to show your mode, it just sorts uh, these values in some way, and just reports to the first one. So it is more or less um, arbitrary uh, arbitrary choice. But did, why did you? Yes. Why did you write median? Sorry. Um, Mode. Sorry. Yeah. Ilya Valerich, I have a question. Yes. I'm sorry. Does it make ever sense to talk about mode for uh, numerical values? I mean, it can be easily determined, but is it any in any case better than median or average? Um, sometimes, yes. Uh, well, it is a good question. Um, basically, if you just uh, if you just use the same uh, the same definition of mode, uh, if you apply the same definition of mode to uh, numeric values, uh, you probably uh, will not get a very um, useful result. Uh, sometimes, uh, especially with integer numeric values, it can make sense, uh, but uh, sometimes uh, it does not make sense uh, if you apply this notion directly. Uh, actually, what can be uh, uh, what uh, can be reasonably discussed is mode uh, not of actual values but of the corresponding distribution. Uh, but to make it more clear, I have to discuss uh, a little bit distributions. And um, okay, let uh, let us uh, let us actually pass to this part, which is uh, rather natural. Uh, so let us discuss a little bit how to represent distributions of data. Um, okay, let us begin with categorical data. Uh, so, if I have uh, if I have something like city of birth, uh, if I report only mode, uh, I report only a small amount of information about uh, this variable. I report only the most frequent value. But uh, if uh, I uh, want to uh, look at uh, a larger picture about uh, my uh, categorical variable. Uh, I can uh, just report not uh, not only the most frequent uh, value, but just to report how often each possible value um, are presented in my uh, data frame. So, uh, in case of categorical data, you can easily easily summarize any categorical variable. If you are interested in this particular variable, you can easily summarize it uh, with a frequency, uh, frequencies, uh, or counts, which is uh, more or less the same thing. Uh, it means that uh, if you have some categorical variable, let it be again uh, city of birth. And you have uh, Moscow, Moscow, Saint Petersburg, Moscow, Ekaterinburg, Saint Petersburg. 
you can just, uh, if you want to summarize this, you can just count how many times uh, you have Moscow in this column, how many times you have St. Petersburg, and how many times you have Yekaterinburg. So uh, we can consider the following table. Uh, we have level and we have frequency. So uh, Moscow, uh, we have frequency three. Uh, St. Petersburg, we have frequency two. And Yekaterinburg, we have frequency one. Uh, this, uh, this is called absolute frequency. Uh, this is just a number of times uh, the corresponding value appears in uh, this series of values. And uh, another uh, way to think about these frequencies are, uh, are relative frequencies. Uh, it is just uh, the same thing, but I have to divide uh, these values by the uh, overall number of mm, elements in my uh, in my data. So in this case, it will be uh, one half, one third, one sixth. These are relative frequencies of my values. So uh, this is a um, rather simple way to summarize uh, this kind of data. And uh, there is a very simple visualization uh, of this uh, table. Uh, they are bar plots and uh, they usually looks like uh, the following. So I have some So this is one half, and this is one third, and uh, this is one sixth. I just have uh, three rectangles, three bars like this. And uh, it is written here that uh, it is Moscow. Oops. Uh, this is St. Petersburg, and this is Yekaterinburg. Uh, so the uh, the height of uh, this the height of these uh, bars uh, is proportional to my frequencies like this. So this is bar plot. And uh, it is a, an easy way to visualize uh, the distribution of, uh, of categorical variable. Uh, if we discuss distribution of numeric variable, uh, it uh, a bit more complicated, uh, but uh, let us, uh, let us uh, discuss how to do it. In case of numeric variable. Can I ask? Uh... Sure. Yeah. Bar plot, it is uh, everything what we discussed or just the last thing? No, what it is no, no, this, 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 thing, this thing is bar plot, this thing. Uh -huh. Okay. So this, Thank is, you. this is bar plot. Mm -hmm. And um, in case of numeric variables, it is uh, not possible to use just this um, approach usually. Uh, because uh, usually if you have just a numeric variable, for example, let us assume that you have just real variable like age and uh, you have this age with some precision uh, like 32.3, uh, 41.2, uh, 35.4 and so on. Let us assume that we have, for example, uh, 20 uh, values like this. Uh, then uh, if I construct a table like this one for this data, uh, what, uh, what will I get most probably? 
if I just try to count how many times I have this exactly value in my uh, data frame. It will show all the numbers, every numbers, every row. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I will get uh, I will get something like that. Each number uh, appear only once. So I will get uh, I will get all, all numbers here and here I will get one, 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 one and so on. And it will not be very informative. Uh, so if um, I want to just to say something about the distribution of my numeric variable, for example, uh, I know that average age of my participants uh, is uh, 30 years. But uh, it is possible that uh, all participants uh, has age very close to 30 years, like 31 and uh, 20, 29. And this is one, one example, one possible uh, situation. And it is also possible that you know, I have a very large range of uh, possible ages. And to distinguish between, this, uh, between these cases, I have to, uh, one, one way to do it is to draw a histogram. Uh, so histogram is uh, the following visualization technique, uh, very general. Uh, so it works like the following. I split, uh, I have just horizontal axis and I will put uh, my numeric values on this horizontal axis. So for example, I have zero here. This is axis H. And uh, I will put uh, some values here, for example, uh, here is uh, 32.3 and uh, this is 41.5 and uh, this is uh, 35.4 uh, and uh, I have some 20 here and I have some 70 here and so on. So I can put, uh, I can put my values, all values of my um, of my variable that I actually obtained. So all values that I have in my data frame, I can put it on um, this line. And okay, let me add just a couple of uh, other points just to make just to make this picture more interesting. Uh, for example, like this. And uh, then I can do the following. I can divide this axis into several segments, usually equal. Something like this. And then uh, I can count how many times uh, I have a value that lies in a particular segment. Uh, so how many points are inside of uh, this segment. And then I can draw a picture that is similar to bar plot, but a bit different uh, in its, its meaning, I can draw again uh, this vertical, vertical rectangles and uh, their, their height will be proportional to number of points that lie in this, uh, in this, um, in the corresponding segment. So for example, I have one, uh, one point here three points here, two points here, one here, zero here, one, one here and one here. So uh, I have this kind of picture and this picture is called histogram. Uh, you see that uh, this picture is visually similar to this bar plot, but uh, it is different uh, in its meaning. Uh, here and here uh, we have some rectangles, uh, but uh, this picture shows us a distribution of some numeric variable. And um, uh, so when you, when you construct uh, a picture, you have to be sure that you understand what kind of picture you want to construct. Actually, sometimes I uh, follow uh, questions that people ask on Stack Overflow. 
uh, you probably know Stack Overflow, the, the main site where you can find answers to your uh, programming questions. And uh, there are, it is very often question when person want uh, to draw a histogram and tries to draw a bar plot or vice versa. Just because from computer points of view, it is uh, a bit different, different things. Uh, but they are visually similar. Uh, when I look at this histogram, uh, I can see, for example, that the most of values that I have are somewhere here between, um, uh, I believe, between uh, 25 uh, and uh, 40 and a little bit larger. So I understand that in my study, uh, I mostly study, uh, for example, adult people. And I have uh, several uh, people of larger ages, senior, but most, most of these people in my sample are just uh, adults, young adults, but I don't have any children uh, that uh, can be uh, situated here. So I have some information about the distribution of these values. And uh, so uh, this, uh, this histogram is actually a very useful and simple way to visualize uh, your numeric data. Uh, the only problem that uh, we have with histogram, you probably have a question about histograms. I described the procedure, how to construct them. Yes. I mean, what happens if uh, several observations coincide? Ah, yeah, if several observations coincide, so if you have several points in, in, in the same place, they are counted. Uh, if you have two points, they are counted twice. Yes, that's a good question. So you just count, you just count number of values that lie in uh, the in the corresponding segment. Yes, um, but uh, that's a good question. But uh, I waited for another question about histogram. How do we uh, decide the borders of uh, bars? Yeah. yeah, that's exactly exactly that question that uh, that uh, uh, I was waiting for. Um, actually, that's a good question because uh, I don't I don't have a universal answer. If you pick a uh, too large too large uh, length of the segment that you uh, that you subdivide then your histogram will be not very informative because uh, it will just contain too little information. Like you have just two, something like this. It is not very interesting to, to look at uh, this kind of picture if you have just two rectangles, two segments. But if you pick very, very small uh, length of segments, uh, then you will get, uh, again, not very informative picture. Uh, because you will get something like this. For example, if you have some points here, and uh, if you have uh, very small uh, segments like this, then a histogram will look like something like this. Um, so if you have a small amount of data, you can just look at this uh, picture and say something. But uh, if you have a large amount of data, uh, then a histogram will look like something like this. And uh, again, it will not be it will not be very informative. So we will have very, very, very small uh, segments uh, with very, very uh, so you have very uh, small width of your rectangles and then um, histogram will not give you uh, a good picture like like this one so you have to be somewhere in between and usually it is uh, um, usually you can just say okay I want 10 uh, segments and it just um, just divides the whole range of your uh, data set uh, from from the smallest value to the largest value, it, it can divide it by 10 equal parts. And sometimes you can use some heuristics that allows you to select uh, this length um, 
in some way that you will get a meaningful picture. Sometimes it is just uh, trial and error. You try to use different, uh, different uh, size of these beans. Actually, this, these things are called beans. I didn't mention it. So uh, this length is called size of bin, uh, the length of this segment. So this is size of bin. And sometimes it is just trial and, uh, and error. You try different sizes and you see which picture is more informative for you. Uh, so uh, returning to the question uh, by Mikhail Alexandrovich about uh, the application of uh, the notion of mold to numeric data. Uh, sometimes it is useful to understand in which segment you have most of the data. So which of this, uh, which of this rectangle is uh, the tallest. And uh, if you pick some number uh, that represents this segment, for example, it's midpoint of this segment, uh, then uh, you will get uh, something similar to the notion of mode uh, for numeric uh, for numeric data again sometimes uh, sometimes it can be important for example some uh, methods uh, some statistical methods uh, assume that your data is unimodal so that your histogram looks like looks like this one uh, but does not look like does not look like this one so this kind of data can be called bimodal because you have two, two local maximas. Um, you have a lot of data here and you have a lot of data here. But um, uh, uh, we, will, we can discuss it in more details if we uh, will get some examples uh, of this. So uh, I believe that uh, I'm out of my time for today.